Sono Enrico Cerasuolo, il regista di Ultima Chiamata. Ultima Chiamata è un film che racconta la storia di questo libro, The Limits to Growth, uscito 40 anni fa. Un piccolo libro che conteneva un grande messaggio. La Terra è un sistema finito e in un sistema finito la crescita infinita non è possibile. Sono Massimo Arvat e sono il produttore di Ultima Chiamata. Eh, abbiamo deciso di fare questo film innanzitutto per cercare una risposta agli scenari di crisi che tutti i giorni sono davanti ai nostri occhi e che sempre di più hanno a che fare con le nostre vite. Una risposta interessante è quella data dagli autori di The Limits to Growth, che si sono ritrovati dopo 40 anni per lanciare nuovamente il loro grido d'allarme. Un grido d'allarme che noi abbiamo deciso di raccogliere e diffondere con questo film. Questo film riguarda profondamente il tuo futuro. Sostienilo. 40 years ago, a report by a team of scientists from the MIT shook the world. They designed and ran the first global computer model ever, suggesting humanity should adapt to the physical limitations of planet Earth in order to avoid overshoot and collapse. During the last year, a group of us at MIT have been looking at the exponential growth of our global social and economic system. We've been led to five basic conclusions. There are physical limits to growth, which, given current trends, are very likely to be encountered even during the lifetime of our children. This growth is going to stop. It must stop and it will stop. Second, the most likely outcome of running into these limits, if we continue to ignore them, is that we'll overshoot those limits and collapse. But we appear to have a viable alternative to this outcome, one in which population and material production could be brought into balance with a finite environment and with our resources. We have learned that more is not necessarily better, that even our great nation has its recognized limits. Fourth conclusion is that it's realistically going to take 50, 100 years or more to reach that alternative in an orderly fashion. We believe then and now there are no limits to growth and human progress when men and women are free to follow their dreams. And finally, every year we delay decreases our ultimate options. No nation, however large or small, wealthy or poor, can escape the impact of climate change. After having spent 40 years fighting for their message, the authors gathered where the Limits to Growth saga began. Which options do they think we have today? 40 years ago, it was still theoretically possible to slow things down and come to an equilibrium. Now that's no longer possible. We are coming into a period of uncontrolled decline. We need now to start focusing specifically on the issue of resilience. Could we have a different path of evolution on the planet by accepting that we do have an impact on the on the planet's climate system. I want to live in a sustainable world where there is no poverty, no hunger, and no erosion of the Earth's resources. What do we need to solve the climate problem? You know, it's a very small shift in the investment flows in society. So instead of investing in what we currently do, which is the most profitable projects, we need to take part of this investment, this money flow, and allocate it into climate-friendly uh, activities. According to the Limits to Growth authors, the environmental and economic crisis we are going through are part of the same global crisis. They don't hold the truth, and they have different views on the future, but we should listen to them for the sake of new generations.